All right, I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining the second session of the planning for implementation track. Um, I'll be facilitating today's session along with Michelle Futornik and Hilary Thorson. If you have questions or comments during the session, the live part of our session today, you may use the Zoom raised hand feature if you'd like to speak, um, or you can use the Q&A panel to type in your question. I have um, the screen I'm sharing shows uh, links to our conference schedule and conference site. And I'll just um, drop the link into the chat in case um, you would need those links. And there's also a Twitter. Our Twitter is hashtag for the conference is uh, hashtag LD4 conference. And we have a Slack channel that um, you may join and specifically a LD4 2020 planning for implementation track. And then there's also a link to the community participation guidelines. So today um, we're continuing uh, our sessions uh, for the planning for implementation track. We have two live lightning talks uh, by Ngozi Unis Osadepe and Winnie Nikesa Okulo. And um, those are going to be followed by a pre recorded presentation by Eder Avila Barrientos and Filiberto Felipe Martinez Arellano. Though the pre recorded presentation you can view independently at any time and then ask questions uh, on our Slack channel. So we'll get started with Ngozi Uniso Sedebe's lightning talk, Federal University Libraries Readiness to Adopt Linked Data Initiative in Nigeria. She is a principal librarian and works at the University of Nigeria Nsuka Library. And she won the best PhD thesis award from Nigerian Library Schools in 2017. And in the same year, uh, won the University of Nigeria Nsuka Excellent Performance Award. Uh, she facilitates the Arts and Feminism Wikipedia Edit-a-thon for the University Library. So I'll turn things over to you, Ngozi, and you're welcome to start sharing your screen. Thank you, Ma. Welcome, everybody. I will be talking about Nigerian Federal Investing Libraries Readiness to adopt, to adopt the Link Data Initiative. First of all, let's have an overview of the study. Hello? Uh, yes. Okay, I want to be sure that I'm being heard. I'm hearing you. Have okay. you started sharing your screen yet? Yes. Okay, I'm not seeing that. Could you try? Okay, you're not seeing my screen. One more time. Share screen. Share screen. Can you see my screen now? I can. And then if you go down and click on that little side slideshow button. It'll take you to present mode. Okay. Great. We're all set. Okay. So once more, you are welcome to this presentation. I will be talking on Nigerian Federal University Libraries Readiness to adopt the Link Data Initiative. Overview of the study. First of all, we will look at the introduction, then the World Wide Web and the rest of us. The World Wide Web and libraries. How ready are Nigerian university libraries in adopting link data initiative? And where in the study is Nigeria? Then we look at the research methods, the results, conclusion, and recommendation. OK, on my screen is the wide world the World Wide Web. And we can see people on all sides working on it. Some are below, some are 
at the middle and some are on top. The way the World Wide Web was constructed made it possible that people can use Angle. It brings about innovation, it brings about creativity, and it has affected the whole world. It's because of the World Wide Web that today people can build apps to solve societal problems. In businesses, today we talk of uh, electronic businesses in government, we talk about electronic government and the rest of them. It's because of the presence of the World Wide Web. Now, in libraries, just like the World Wide Web has affected everything in the world, it has also affected libraries. Libraries started with book catalog, catalog, uh, card catalog. Today we are talking of online catalogs. We are talking of institutional repositories and we are talking of online resources. And recently, a new term, link data, has joined the queue. Somebody will ask, what is this link data? Link data is an initiative that encourages institutions to publish their, to publish, share, and cross, cross link their data using the web. Authors have talked about the benefits of link data and its importance in libraries and how it will help libraries to gain more users and also visibility for their resources. But it looks like it is only overseas, it is only in developed nations that people are making use of this resource, the link data. Because when you search through literature, you will see countries in Germany, such as the, national, the German National Library. You will see the European data model, and you will see the bibliographic framework of the Library of Congress. You will never see anything about African countries and link data, especially Nigeria. It looks like we are not following or on on the benefits of link data. So because of that, this study want to explore or to examine how ready are Nigerian libraries to adopt this new initiative of the link data. We will do this looking at four objectives. First is to identify what uh, Nigerian librarians know about the benefits of link data. We will look at what they know about link data tools, and then the skills they possess to work with these tools, and then the likely problems that we encounter in using uh, in adopting the link data initiative. But before we go on, it will be nice to look at Nigeria. Ngozi. Looks like oh. Ngozi, can you hear us? Ngozi, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, it looks like um, you Hello. dropped it. Yes, okay. can you hear me? It looks like you dropped out. Could you share your screen again? And I, I may try turning off your video. That may help with the sound. Okay. Okay, you can turn off my video. Okay. And then if you'd like to share your screen again. Okay. Let me share. Share my screen again. Do you see the share screen button at the bottom of the Zoom mm -hmm. window? 
Okay, let me check for it. Share screen. Okay. Yes. Um, no, I'm not seeing it. Okay, let first of all, let me pick my screen and see if it will come. No, it didn't come out. Uh, it says you've started screen sharing. Here we go. Can you see my screen? I can see it now. And then if you click um, that slideshow button again at the bottom, we should be able to see okay, it. Okay, it's out now. Yeah, it's out now. Slideshow. I have clicked on it, slice you. Can okay. you see it now? It hasn't okay. changed yet. Oh, here we go. We're all set. Go right ahead. Okay. So that's where we stopped. So I was talking about the location of Nigeria. Nigeria is a West African country. It is bounded by the north, at the north by the Republic of Chad to the no, by Niger Republic. Here is Niger Republic. Sorry. At the north of Nigeria is Niger Republic. By its eastern side, we have Cameroon and we have Chad. Chad here and then Cameroon. At its eastern, no, southern side, is the Atlantic Ocean, and by the western side, side is the Republic of Togo. Nigeria is made up of 36 states, and in each of these states, there is a federal university. Then there are other institutions, such as the, there are other universities that add up to make the number of universities in Nigeria into 40. These are the Federal University of Petroleum Resources, the Police Academy, and the rest of them. Now, uh, in each of these universities, in each of these states, like I said before, there is a federal university, and each federal university has its attached academic library. The common resources within Nigerian academic libraries are textbooks, reference books, textbooks, reference books, journals, abstracts, indices, online resources, and the rest of them. Now, this study we are talking about, this study on the Federal Investing Readiness is based on the technology acceptance theory model. You know, Lean Data is about technology. And the technology acceptance theory is a pocket, uh, Talked about people's attitude towards the use of technology. When people feel that the technology is useful to them, they will use it. When they feel that it is easy to use, they will use it. So when the technology is useful, we call it perceived usefulness, PU then people will have the attitude, they will have the intention to use it. When they feel also that the technology is easy to use, they will use it. But it is these two independent variables, perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use, that determines people's ability or people's attitude towards technology. Eventually, when it is useful, but very difficult to use, people will not like to use it. When it is useful and easy to use, people will like to use it. We continue. So this, in this work, I use librarians in the digital and cataloging sections of the 40 uh, university, federal university libraries in Nigeria. 
I choose the cataloging and the digital library staff because they are the people that are actually involved in resource description in libraries. Catalogers are the people involved in resource description. People in digital library manage the library's online presence and resources. That's why I choose these two departments within the library. Then within these departments, I, through the help of their university administration, select, purposely selected three staff from each department, making a total of six staff from each academic library. Uh, the instrument used for gathering data for this work is, was an online questionnaire. The questionnaire was designed by myself. And the method I use in the analysis is just frequency counts. The data I collected, I presented on tables. Then somebody will ask, why is it that you selected just federal universities when there are other universities in Nigeria? I selected federal universities because in Nigeria, federal universities are the ones that are most uh, more well-funded compared to other universities. So be more well-funded, well it is likely that they will be able to employ skilled personnel and, uh, and then and procure uh, facilities that will, and procure relevant facilities for their libraries. This is the result of the study. Uh, the first, this is the first table and uh, the first research question. Respondents' awareness of the benefits of laying data for libraries. If we look at this table, out of the 240 people, six people from each university, thanks, uh, thanks 40 university that we give us 240, we share the, I share the questionnaire online, but eventually only 201 were filled and returned. So the statistics here is based on 201 respondents. So if we look at this first table, it has options one to seven. It has, yes, options one to seven. And then it has items, the statements of the benefits of link data for libraries one to seven. And then options for, for which the respondents will give answers, three, yes, no, and no idea. If we look at it, all of the response, more than half of the respondents are aware of the benefits of link data for libraries. The first one, 160, the second one, 160, the third one, 159 respondents, and so on. So the librarians, by what this table is portraying, is aware or are aware of the benefits of link data for libraries. Then the second objective, how familiar are, library, are the librarians with link data tools? And I said that familiar in this sense stands for they are having working knowledge of link data tools. If we look at the items listed from three, item one, which is triple store, down to item 10, Omega software, we will find out that only very few librarians have working knowledge of these items to a very high extent. If you look at triple store, just 18 people have one good working knowledge up uh, to a very high extent. The only one that at least up to a half of the respondents have a, a very high, the only one that the respondents are familiar to or have a good working knowledge to a very high extent is universal resource identifier in which 108 people are knowledgeable in it. So if we look at the table, one can easily conclude that these people are not 
knowledgeable to a very high extent on link data tools. Then the third table thought, thought of the extent to which the respondents possess skills needed for working in the link data environment. If we look at it, the same thing happened. Not very many people are scaled to a very high extent in, the, in these scales. It is only in collaborative scale that up to 108 people have the required scale and the social media scale. Then when we turn to the fourth table, we seek information on the likely problems that federal, that Nigerian Federal University Libraries will encounter in adopting the Link Data Initiative. We found out that all that more than half of the respondents are aware of all the problems. So if we have to summarize the result of this work, it will be that they are aware of the benefits of link data, but they don't have working knowledge of the tools, and they don't have enough, the required skill for working in the link data environment. Then they know of all the problems. They know of the problems that they that are associated with the link data with publishing data as link data. So in conclusion, I said that finding sure that Nigerian cataloging and digital staff are aware of the benefits of link data and the likely problems that will arise from adopting it. The librarians do not have sufficient working knowledge of the tools needed to implement it. Neither do they possess the skills for working in the link data environment. Federal university libraries in Nigeria are therefore not currently prepared to adopt the link data initiative. Linking the technology acceptance model theory to this finding, one can conveniently conclude that Nigerian federal university libraries are not, ready to, are not yet ready to adopt the link data initiative because the librarians perceive the technology tools as not easy to use. This perception, therefore, affected their attitude towards its adoption and use. Then in the recommendation, I said that, we, in the recommendation, I said that uh, the world is changing with a lot of innovations brought by the internet and Nigerian librarians should move along with it. Then the second recommendation is that we need, Nigerian librarians need more exposures through international workshops to help us to be informed of current developments in our field. Then most importantly, I think there is a need for publish and simplify step-by-step -step guides on how to publish library data as link data so that people will have something to fall back on. We know of the mobile phone that almost everybody has now. But the uh, mobile phone penetrated because it was easy and it was cheap. So if there will be a step, a little write up a step-by-step -step guide to help people to learn more about this link data initiative. I believe it will help us a lot. Then um, libraries in the Western world should help libraries in the developing world through staff exchange programs and other collaborative measures to ensure that libraries in developing countries do not remain backwards. The recommendation continues. Then another is to change the mindsets of librarians towards emerging technological developments in the library and information science field. It is important that people are made to look at things from their positive side rather than the negative one. Then another one is to assess the skills of cataloging and digital librarians in Nigeria to ensure that it is the right people that are there. Uh, under the current situation in the world, where everybody is changing, where everything is changing, where the internet is driving 
is the driving force for development now. It is important that these two sections of the library are manned by people that are technology savvy, people that are interested in growth, people that are interested in moving forward. If every other person will be dropped there, we will continue to be back west. Then the last but not the least, I say that Nigerian Library Association and the Librarians Registration Council of Nigeria should come to the rescue of Nigerian libraries and librarians by mounting re relevant free workshops on current developments in the library. The workshops should be free to attract as many people as possible because it is the cost attached to most work workshops that scare people away. After this study, then I felt that there, is, there will be need for further study on the sources of information and linked data to librarians in Nigeria for them to perceive it as a very difficult task. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Ngozi. Yeah. Um, if you stop sharing your screen, I'll ask you to turn on your video again and we can um, see if that works. Okay, okay, let me stop sharing my screen. For the Q&A. And yeah. um, for everyone, if you would like to ask a question, you're welcome to raise your hand if you'd like to speak or ask in the Q&A panel. And it looks like we have a question from Jesse. Um, Thank you so much for your presentation. I see your libraries are using things like Koha and Omeka. Do most of your libraries tend toward open source systems? How does that help with knowledge about linked open data training or planning? Thank you very much. Yeah, open source software means that even we are closed because the, using open source, open source is free. And just like my library, we are using Koha. And Koha can easily be migrated to link data using the RDF software. But you know, the thing is that people, maybe based on my findings, people have not explored this, this part. Or so maybe the fear that it eventually uh, nobody will notice their effort or nobody to sponsor them or there will be no training for them to foster it. That's what I feel is the cause. Otherwise, we are using open source software. My library here at the University of Nigeria, we are using Kuha. I don't know if I have answered the question. Thanks, Ngozi. Uh, looks like we have another question in the Q&A and then a raised hand. Uh, so the first question from the Q&A, Thank you for the presentation. This is Michael. Do you have any literature to back up your statement that federal universities are more funded compared to private and state university libraries? Uh, federal university libraries are funded more. If we go, okay, just as an instance, yesterday my colleague from Nigeria from a private university did a presentation. She was, he was asking that that fund should encourage private universities too. That is enough evidence that federal universities in Nigeria are funded more through the federal fund. Hello. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I'll call on Adi Tomiwa Basiru. You should be able to unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Hi. Hi, we can Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Sadebe, thank you for your yeah. wonderful presentation. Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you so much, ma. I just want to uh, contribute on the area of uh, library management software, COA. Okay. Um, uh, COA, currently COA is, the, is one of the best uh, library management software. But the problem we have with it in Nigeria is that uh, the skill of librarians, and if you notice that one, most, of, most libraries that have adopted COA, 
the employer is having some vendor. Uh, Koa Live Management Software is, is the best software for now to for uh, to manage uh, link data, um, especially among the uh, uh, academic library. With Koa, you can even get the graphic details from your uh, uh, book vendors. You can connect your software with uh, book sellers. They will, what they, will, they can just import all the bibliographic, bibliographic details of the book into your database. But some of these vendors, maybe at time, maybe because of negotiation with them, they don't go to extend to train in Liberia to explore some of the features of some of these core. In my library too, we are using core. And you can, you might like my library now, we are using core to do indexing and abstracting. That was time we discovered in my library that people are not using serial resources again. We have to be cataloging journal articles with core. So core is, 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 is the best LMS now for link data, but because of the technicality of Liberian managing it and the vendor that's, that is selling this software, they are not really training Liberia to really explore uh, uh, some of these things. Then secondly, I want to comment on the funding and mapping. Our daughter Osadibe mentioned it today, that funding is a major thing. A lot of libraries want to do other things about link data, but funding is the major uh, uh, entrance. And I'm happy I work in center on Federal University, and it's giving her the reason that why she studied in the Federal University because they are all well funded uh, university. And despite the fact that we have some private universities that are doing wonderfully well in Nigeria. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. We have another question in uh, Q&A from Onan. Thanks for the fantastic presentation. Uh, could you have considered some demographic characteristics uh, like age? There is a perceived relationship between adoption of technology and age. Maybe the results could have been different. Okay. Age, as in terms of the respondents or age of the library? I believe in terms of the respondents. Okay. Uh, it's unfortunate I didn't cover the, the age in the discussion and then the slides. I looked at the working experience of the respondents, of my respondents. So uh, under that, I noted various age ranges. There were people that uh, have worked, had worked in the library between a year and five. There are some that have worked between six and 10, uh, 11 and 15, and the rest of them until we get to 26 and above. So among the respondents are new entrants. I know that some are uh, library, uh, uh, assistant librarians. And there are people that are uh, deputy university librarians, which is associate professor. There are no professors in the study. So I looked at the work experience, not their ages. Their years of work experience, not the ages. Thank you. And we have another question. Uh, thank you for from Huda. Thank you for your presentation. I am not a librarian, but have heard themes similar to the ones you found less familiarity or comfort with linked data technologies. To clarify, the table you showed with the columns VHE, HE, VLE, and LE, do those column names stand for very high exposure, etc.? What does the E stand for? Please, can you repeat the question? I didn't get it. Sure. So in the table you showed that had the columns um, labeled VHE, HE, VLE, and LE, what does the E and those abbreviations stand for? Okay. That is very high extent. To what The question was, to what extent are you familiar with these linked data tools? So the VHE is very high as
Hello. Hello. Sorry about that. I think we're we're okay now. I can hear okay. you. Okay. So I said that the question is: To what extent are you familiar with this? To what extent are you proficient in this? So the VHE is very high extent, high extent. HE is high extent. LE is low extent, and VLE is very low extent. Thank you. And it looks like we have a couple hands raised. Um, I'll call on Michael. Uh, you should be allowed to talk. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. I want to appreciate the presenter for the wonderful job. Um, mine my, my is more of a um, contribution to, I'm calling from Nigeria. I'm calling from Nigeria rather. Uh, from my library here, we are using the um, innovative millennial for library operation. And um, it's also, there's a future, of, a future for linked data there. At least we have access to Library of Congress, um, quite a number of libraries uh, out on that platform. So we make use of linked data as well. I want to encourage the researcher, if, if there's a need for you to further to carry out more studies, to find out uh, libraries and the kind of software they are using, uh, library management software they are using for their operations, so that I can know exactly where um, the gap, because there's some, I know there's some software that don't have a feature of linked data. So if that will make your work more robust. Okay. And Thank you very much. That's a very good one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good one. So that we be sure. I understand you very well. We, you are saying that we have to carry a further research to find out what softwares libraries are using so that we yes. know if the softwares are compatible or can be migrated yes. to link data. Okay, very yes. good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Um, and looks like we have Filiberto. I'll allow you to talk. You should be able to unmute yourself and ask your question. Filiberto. All right, we'll come back to you. Uh, there's a question in the Q&A from Christine. What kinds of learning materials are most helpful to your colleagues? And are there ways conferences like this one could be more helpful to them? Um, okay, I talked of workshops, not conferences, because uh, chance, but if we talk of workshop, workshops are more of learning. Learning, so I'm talking of workshops where members can learn new skills. Workshops, I, I don't think online workshop will help us much because uh, uh, poor internet connect connectivity will come up and so on. So I'm talking of maybe at the end of the COHA pandemic, if we can have a physical workshop where uh, librarians can be exposed more to link data techniques. Thank you. And Filiberto, are you able to unmute and ask your question? No, I, I don't have any question. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, and one last question before we move on to Winnie. Uh, Tharwat asks in the Q&A, in your opinion, what are your priorities to go to link data? Um, funding or training programs or software or increasing internet bandwidth connection? Um, are you participating in any library consortium? 
any library consortia so like a, a group of libraries okay but... so is, is it consortium yeah. okay um right away uh, i participate in the wiki ld for affinity group meetings in which you teach us how to work on link data but apart from that i have not participated okay no i participated in the wiki indaba 2019 uh, conference in uh, abuja nigeria but it was a it was a conference we didn't have the practical hands-on uh, practice of working with link data so apart from the ld4 affinity group workshop you organize there is no other one around so we need more of them thank you thank you so much winnie for your excellent presentation and for the great q a i'm going um thank you so much ngozi i'm going to turn things over to winnie now uh thank you again for your excellent presentation and um and we'll turn things over to Winnie. Uh, Winnie, if you'd like to share your screen, you may. Great. Um, Ms. Winnie Nikesa Kulo holds a master's degree in information science from McCary University. She is the head of library and documentation center at the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Authority. Winnie is a standing member of the IFLA Government Library Section and Africa Regional Secretary of the International Association for Social Science Information Service and Technology. She is currently advocating for research data management in the LIS curriculum in Uganda. She is a researcher and has presented at a number of both local and international conferences. I think if you hit play at the top of your screen, it should uh, go to presentation mode. There we go. Oh, and you're muted. Can you unmute? Okay, I, I, you're unmuted, so we should be able to hear you. Okay, um, thank you very much. Thanks for that introduction, Hilary. I'm trying to look for my screen to my video. I'll share, maybe I'll share. I'll share with you. I'll share with you later. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to colleagues who have taken time to be part of this um, session. As I've been introduced, my name is Winnie Nikesa Akulo, and uh, I will be sharing with you an investigation that I did regarding. Uh, public universities and the state of linked data in Uganda. Um, my presentation is highlighted into the introduction, the objective of my study, then the different open data initiatives by the public universities, uh, the challenges and strategies that we can use to get members on board about linked data technologies. Mm. And then I'll be able to share with you the conclusion. Uh, colleagues, the main objective of my study was to establish whether and to what extent data at the different public universities in Uganda is linked and is being shared. Uh, to the different users, most so researchers in the institutions. 
um, as we all as we are all aware, universities are the apex of higher education institutions, and uh, the public universities in Uganda are authorized by law to award degrees, diplomas, and certificates. Although currently certificates are being phased out and diplomas from the public universities, and concentration is on degrees. Um, their main distinguishing characteristic is that uh, these universities are able to create new knowledge uh, through research and as well as publication. In addition, uh, they are expected to engage with the different communities, of course, where we gather the, the data from. Uh, in terms of passing on the knowledge, skills, and rendering services to the communities. So more so when uh, students go and conduct research, these findings, as my colleague has been sharing with us, they should be disseminated or be shared with our communities that, have, that were able to, con to contribute to the study. Uh, in Uganda, we have nine public universities, and these are more or less in different regions in the country, so that uh, uh, these regions, uh, that is the question in those regions are able to this quality education. The universities, focus on different areas, uh, like Bustema University is more inclined to agriculture sciences, um, Muni University, Soroti University, um, Lira University are more inclined to cater for multi-purpose programs without necessarily uh, being specialized. Then Soroti, um, Barara University of Science and Technology are, inc are inclined to uh, sciences and technology. Then Chambogo is more focused on technical vocational training. And Makere is encompassed or encompasses all these uh, the fields. Uh, why? Is because Makere is the oldest university and these are more or less coming after Makere University. Different open data initiatives and here I'm focusing on one of the uni public universities that is Chambogo University which has uh, this initiative of OpenStreetMap. And this map basically is a world map which has been created by different people over the world and allows users under an open license. Uh, it's data is created using the free wiki world map and anyone can be able to access it. it it's able to provide uh, open geospatial data. So how is this helping the community at Chambogo University? There's different students who are pursuing the surveying, the land surveying and then land economics programs are able to access this data for their research projects. Of course, uh, research involves a lot of resources, financial resources, so instead of the students going out to the field to collect this data, they're able to access it free of charge uh, through this initiative. Um, interestingly, whereas Chambogo has this initiative, it is a standalone. This, this data is not linked to any of, any of their platforms. So which means that uh, students cannot easily access this information uh, at any time in the libraries. And of course, usually what they do is to create awareness. They have 
different events so that they're able to share with the students these different initiatives. So this is one of the structures that I got from the wiki world map and uh, it brings out, it shows you the data model and uh, the structure. Uh, and here I was looking at the different facilities during this COVID, showing us how uh, people are able to access these hand washing facilities during this COVID. So once a student is interested in acquiring this information, she or she is able to uh, get uh, this aggregated data from that platform. Then the other one, uh, which is big, and uh, my colleague shared with, with, uh, with us yesterday, is the Online National Biodiversity Data Bank at the Macquarie University. Um, Macquarie is inclined more to research as well. And uh, there are a number of initiatives, uh, lots of funding uh, from the government as well as from the donors. And uh, one of the initiatives that has been um, established or developed is this data bank. And this was basically developed or established to provide these co conservationists readily access to data and information regarding the different, uh, the country's biodiversity, more so to inform decision-making process in Uganda. That, will, that would affect the diversity and then the environment as a whole. Uh, the data bank is the central repository for all the biodiversity data in Uganda. It serves both the public, private, and also the civil society domain. So I'm to just share with you as a few snap screenshots here on how this data is accessed. Uh, uh, a researcher, or whoever is interested in this data, is able to download this data either as a CSV, Excel, or PDF, and is able to reanalyze or analyze the data according to his or her needs. Then on the other hand, you can see how the, the dashboard, how this can be searchable. So getting to our linked data, my colleague, my colleague has already defined what linked data is. Uh, but in simple terms, it can be defined as in a way that uh, it's machine readable. And uh, with this use of the RIDF, different institutions and organizations are using semantic web to make uh, this data accessible. And uh, that is the link data life cycle that we look at from the data ingestion up to the data analysis. And maybe share with you how this data is linked at Macquarie University. My colleague had really shared with you this, but I thought I would bring it here in my presentation as well. Uh, we can see that uh, Harvard data, mm. data, Dataverse has a data set of that specific study and uh, this when you when you're able to access the Macquarie University institutional repository you're able to see that there's a link to this data so which means that when when a researcher wants to access this data set accessing the institutional repository takes that researcher to the Harvard data dataverse to be able to access this information. But what is interesting is that as a university or most of the universities don't have access or they don't have the data sets themselves. The data sets are with the researchers, 
now like as you're, you're seeing here most uh, most of the funded projects or most of the funded studies usually the, the funders take away the data sets so it is very difficult um, for the researchers or even the libraries to access this data so that they're able to link it for their users to link it to their institutional repository so that people are able to uh, get this data and then be able to use it for further research. So that gives you more of what I've explained. The URL is there, the external data source. Some are system generated, others um, the, the librarians have to create them themselves. Then for the other universities, interestingly, when I ask them about having linked data or having data in their libraries, the first thing that, the first thing that mm. they thought about was the institutional repositories, that that's where you can access any data. So it's more or less like data is intertwined with, uh, with information. So when I investigated or when I went to do further analysis and research from the institutional repositories, what, they, uh, what I would see was basically text of the theses that have been published and uh, also uh, simple item records that have been recorded by the librarians. And this you can see from Chambogo University and also in Busitema. And uh, maybe what to note is that they use the DSpace institutional repository. Then externally, interestingly, that as I earlier indicated that externally, this data is, it, it, it has already been accessed and is being stored somewhere in the different uh, data institutions. I tried to look out for Makere for any article on Makere, in data set on Makere, I saw something from Harvard Dataverse, and then also from the UK Data Service. So you see that this, info, this data is externally, but we don't have it internally. And these librarians are not aware that actually the users can be able, can, can be able to access this data using the URIs that they can uh, link in their institutional repositories. Then the challenges, like my colleague has mentioned, lack of awareness. Most of these librarians, or most of the institutions are not aware about linked data technologies. And also there's an issue of lack of funding, which is major, but uh, with the public universities, funding has been at least funding has been secured. The only child maybe is the university library. Winnie, it sounds like your audio dropped out. Can you still hear me? Can you hear me, Winnie? Can you hear us? Seems like your audio has dropped out, unfortunately. All right, it looks like Winnie dropped off for a moment. Um, I know we do have a question for her in the Q&A, so I'll see um, if she's able to join back again. Otherwise, we can um, collect questions in the Slack channel if she's not able to rejoin. But we'll wait a couple minutes to see if she can. Um, in the meantime, I can direct you to the pre-recorded session 
and I'll share my screen quickly. Um, let's see. Can yes. Okay. So just to say that um, we'll be having a pre-recorded session linked data proposal in the Nautilo catalog of the National Library of Mexico, um, given by Ada Avia Barrientos. Oh, you're back, wonderful. Um, so I'll share the link uh, for this slide in the chat. Uh, Winnie, do you want to try sharing your screen again? I thought you shared this off. It is not shared. No, not right now. Uh, you dropped out, so I think oh. it stopped at that point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, yes. So that's we, okay? Yes, we lost a bit of the audio. Um, I think we're back on the challenges of linked data slide. Am I on? <laughs> yes, you're on. Uh, I'm just saying we, we had lost your audio, uh, so we weren't able to hear you for maybe the last minute or so of your presentation. Okay, I don't seem to see the shared words. So, so we saw that and then it the audio dropped off in the middle of your next slide. I don't seem to see the share. Uh, let's see, it looks like it's paused for me. It's, yeah, right. Christine's saying it's frozen for us. Are you able to try sharing again? Share Can you hear me? Let me share it again. Okay. So I'm not seeing your presentation. It may have gotten minimized. Are you seeing anything? I see your screen, but not the presentation. Um, it may have gotten minimized. I don't know where I'm at. It's okay. Should we move to the Q and A, and then um, and we can we'll make your slides are available on um, the session description. So if anyone missed the last one, they'll be able to see it there. Okay, maybe what I wanted to share. Um, let's come in at on the strategies. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Where's okay, let's share. There's something I wanted to share because I, I think I'm failing to to get the the link. But uh, I thought uh, I, I thought that I would what that I would, I would I would also share with you the strategies for implementation of the link data. Um, one of the strategies that was proposed was to design link data tools that match with the workflows and the skills of the information professionals so that it's easier for them to adapt to. And then also, okay. There we go. We can see it again. 
Then uh, the other was capacity development. Of course, as my colleagues have mentioned, uh, we need an enabling environment so that uh, colleagues are able to implement these technologies and this will involve or will require training uh, from, from you people who, who have been able to, uh, who are advanced in linked data. Then also developing data management policies, uh, policies that require management buy-in for them to appreciate um, what data can be used for. Then also the issue of partnership and collaborations with institutions which are already implementing linked data technologies. And this, of course, I emphasize collaboration, collaboration, and collaboration. Because as you've heard from all the presentations from developing countries, we still have major challenges in implementing linked data technologies. So we need to find a synergy from uh, from, from now that developed from you, the organizers, and help us to gain the capacity. And this would maybe involve uh, collaborating with universities uh, uh, of the different participants who have been able to present. And maybe, as my colleague mentioned, through uh, supporting them in uh, workshops so that people are able to appreciate uh, linked data and what it can do to ease um, research data management in uh, public institutions. So lastly, uh, in my conclusion, uh, as I've indicated, linked data is still a very new concept. And this was confirmed in the public universities that carried out the study. And the, the uncertain about it and hesitant to take, it, to take the initiative in the institutions. Reason being that uh, they fear the cost of late data implementation, which is currently the least important barrier for the libraries. And now with the COVID in Uganda, uh, institutions are closed. Uh, public institution, universities have been closed and uh, funding has been cut. So, Priorities, of course, are going to, to differ once they reopen, maybe next year. And then also to emphasize, uh, we need to partner, 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 and collaborate with uh, other institutions uh, like Stanford, Harvard, all those institutions that have been able to implement to help us uh, appreciate uh, linked data in developing countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about the internet. Thank you. Thank you so much, Winnie, for your presentation. Uh, we'll move into the q and A. It looks like there's already a question um, from Jesse that I'll make sure that gets shared on Slack uh, as well. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, for the work at Kiambogo University using OSM, are your librarians or students also contributing to that MAPS data? like with enhancements um, for serving and other work taking place? Um, oh, and that's the, that's the question. Uh, thank you very much. The students are contributing to, to the, uh, the, the world map. However, the librarians, they are creating awareness for the students to appreciate and understand that uh, instead of uh, conducting primary uh, data collection, they can be able to access this data from, from that platform. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have additional questions? If you'd like, you can raise your hand and um, speak or ask in the Q&A. I'm seeing a hand. Let's see, for some reason, I am not seeing a hand.
Was someone raising their hand? I'm not seeing it now. Oh yes, and we have a question in the Q&A from Onan. Thanks, Winnie, for that wonderful presentation. Yes, it is very true that most librarians can't differentiate between data sets and other records. And in the chat, Adetun, we alluded saying, uh, thank you, Winnie, you brought the institutional repository as a source of linked data. Can this be linked to the main data sources generally in the catalogs of the universities? Come again. Um, you talked about the institutional repositories as sources of linked data. Can this be linked to the main data sources generally in the catalogs of universities? Uh, yeah, they, they can for the, main, for the main source, but I'm not sure about the catalogs because I really didn't do uh, any investigation on that. but something that may be um, that I can do research about and maybe find out if it's possible. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any additional questions? I'm not seeing any, but if anything comes to mind, I will direct you to our Slack channel. Thank you so much, Winnie, for your excellent presentation. I'll just go ahead and um, share the slide again to say um, that our next presentation, Linked Data Proposal in the Nautilo Catalog of the National Library of Mexico is pre-recorded. Um, I'll share the link for the slide in chat, but it is also, this is also in the session description. And you're welcome to um, view the recorded session at any time and you can add questions and comments on, on the Slack channel. That's, there's a direct link here, but um, also uh, it is the LD4 underscore 2020 underscore planning underscore for underscore implementation underscore track channel um, in our LD4 Slack space. Um, so you're welcome to direct questions to, to either there and um, we will get back with answers um, as soon as we can. So thank you all so much for joining today's final session of the planning for implementation track. Thank you very much to Winnie and Ngozi for their excellent presentations. And we hope we'll be able to continue the great Q&A that was started here in the Slack channel. So don't hesitate to post further questions and comments there. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care and have a great rest of the day or evening. Thank you very much. We are very grateful. Thank you very much. Let me remove Thank my. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Very much. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Winnie. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, bye.